from Nationals Park in Washington, D.C. We're going to be treated to a gorgeous day for baseball on the show. It's the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Washington Nationals. All right, we'll be back to get this one started after this. Just a little bit away from first pitch. Getting the nod in this one. Mackenzie Gore, what should we keep an eye on here? It's always interesting to see how he utilizes all of his pitches and how many of those he has a good feel for on that given day. When he's right, he's really able to keep hitters guessing, and all of his stuff seems to be coming out of the same arm slot, the same tunnel, and that can make life very difficult on his opponents. O'Neill yeah. Cruz leading things off and takes a strike. Rolled over to third. Gets it to first. And a quick out number one. Here's a Pirates lineup now. We could be in for a power showcase today with the wind blowing out a lot of lift and separate, Chris. Well, we know guys are in this era definitely trying to hit the ball in the air regardless of the conditions, but I think even a little more so there's margin for error if you can get the ball up in the air. So, you know, you'll see at times, I'm sure, with two strikes, what looks like a half swing that can get out of the ballpark with a guy who's got decent pop. That one misses, and it's one and one. One out, base is empty. And that's in for a strike. That misses the zone. Now two and two. One down, base is empty. Fly ball down the line. And that's a foul ball. The pitch. Wouldn't chase that time. He goes down looking. Well, he should get some fist bumps when he gets back into the dugout because even though he strikes out, he saw a lot of pitches and he battled. And this is a long haul where you're trying to get that pitch count up as early as possible. So gave the guys behind him an opportunity to see what's working for this pitcher or not. But I tell you what, it's a nice job right there. And that's too high. Two out, space is empty. And a foul ball. Aye. And now two and two. Two ball, two strikes. And another ball. And that's too high, ball four. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is if you are the offensive side of it. Two outs. Way outside. And that's ball two. Now snap throw to first. Hayes back in standing. 
Two gone, but the go-ahead run is at first. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. On the ground to third. Whips it to Gallo. And that is the inning. Pirates leave one. And now the Nats get their first opportunity. There's no score. You're dialed into the show. Back here in Nationals Park. And on the mound for Pittsburgh in this one, Mitch Keller. What do you have on him? Well, this guy featuring that straight forcing fastball, but off of it throws the cutter. And really, he's most effective when he's using that cutter off the forcing fastball just to miss the barrel of the bat. Not always going to see the swings and misses, but if you can somehow get weaker contact, you have a chance to collect some outs. Now, it's going to look the same until the very last second. So hitters are going to have to make a decision and hope that sometimes they're able to guess right. Next offering is in for a strike. All right, now, he may have not liked either of those first two pitches or agreed with the umpire's calls, but at this point, he's going to have to bear down and be ready to hit anything close to the zone. That one at 95 missed up top, and it's one and two. And that misses off the outside edge. It's a good take. Spoils that one and it remains two and two. Gets a piece and stays alive. Righty to the plate. Just off the inside edge. And now filled up. That one misses. So a leadoff walk. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. Well, that's a nice job of grinding out that at bat. Saw a lot of pitches and ends up drawing the walk. Very gritty. Here's Lane Thomas. In there for strike one. He's been known to jump all over the first pitch, so that seems like a missed opportunity right there. The 0-1. One and one. It's a pitch out, nothing doing, and that's ball one. The pitch. That's in there. One and two. The two strikes may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. Runner at first with no outs here. And another ball. Throw to first. Abrams back on a dive. And that's downstairs and outside. Still just the second batter of the inning. And on the mound, he's already thrown 13 pitches. They've got him working hard out there. The pitch. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. I want to start that load a little bit sooner because of the good velo. Righty delivers. Got him looking, and he did not like the call. No, just couldn't pull the trigger on the fastball right there, and I don't think he was taking it, thinking it might be a called ball or anything. I just think he was flat out frozen. Did not expect that location, in my opinion. Joey Gallo steps to the plate. Move to first. Abrams back easily. And that's in there at the knees. Oh, 
This will trim it. Deep center field on its way. Home run. He powers that one out of here. And it gives him the lead in the first. It's 2-0. That's a fun way to take the lead. Just hit one out of the park. Let's break out the stat cast numbers. It's singing. It tells us this home run was projected at more than 450 feet. Yeah, and not many players can hit home runs as far as this one. That's a special feeling, and I'm sure he was giggling a little bit as he was jogging around the bases. That was one heck of a swing he put on the baseball. Joey no, Manessis in the box now as he leaves that one up high. Keller, an all-star a season ago, he features a four-seam fastball, a cutter, a sinker, a slurve, and he occasionally uses a curve. Now a high fly ball out to left center. Two away down. All right, let's take a look at the lineup. We could be in for a power showcase today with the wind blowing out a lot of lift and separate, Chris. Uh, we know hitters are in this era definitely trying to hit the ball in the air regardless of the conditions, but I think even a little more so there's margin for error if you can get the ball up in the air. So, you know, you'll see at times, I'm sure, with two strikes, what looks like a half swing that can get out of the ballpark with a hitter who's got decent pop. But why to kick the pitch? Aye. Gets a piece and it stays 0 and 2. The wind of the pitch. One Not ball. even close there. And that is ball one. Swing and a miss for the strikeout. Blew the express right by his bat for strike three. Nats pick up a pair in the inning on this two-run homer. And it's two-zip. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Back in Washington, D.C. New inning getting started. And now the right fielder, Jack Sawinski. As the lefty gets to work, that's inside, and it's 1-0. Oh. Gore, 25 years old, a former first-round pick back in 2017. Up the middle, Abrams tosses the first, one up, one down. Well, he's doing a nice job of keeping the ball out of the air, lets the defense work behind him with another ground ball. Good execution. Here's the catcher to hit, Henry Davis. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. That catches the corner. Backdoored him with the breaking ball. Just got the corner. There's nothing you can really do with that. Ball one there. Ricky Holiday, our umpire behind the dish, known as pretty fair umpire for both hitters and pitchers. Yeah, I think that's right, Boo. There is a little inconsistency on the corners of the plate. You can't always be sure how it's going to go with those borderline pitches as the game progresses. And yeah, nope. that's outside, okay. and it's 2 and one Wouldn't that's chase that three. time. One down, base is empty. 3-1, and he couldn't come up with it. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. And now it's Rowdy Telez. And that one fouled off. 
Now, this guy's definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ball game. Gets the call, and that is strike two. Step off, throw to first, and he's back standing. I think you want to get a one-way lead, be very aggressive in the secondary. This hitter not a power guy, so you want to make sure that you can get some length on the secondary lead and perhaps score on a ball in the gap. With the tying run at the plate, here at the top of the second. Off the mark there, now one and two. And that's the strikeout looking. Called strike three and a fastball up in the zone. Now here is Michael A. Taylor. Michael A. Taylor. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. Taylor, a former Gold Glove winner, 33 years old, and he was a sixth round draft pick back in 2009. Two outs. That just misses. It's a ball and two strikes. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Misses. And the count is even two and two. He's really tightening up his hitting zone with two strikes here. I love it. And it's filled up. Great RBI spot here. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Leover Paguero next to bat for the box. Can't connect on the curveball, struck him out. No runs, no base hits, no errors, and one left on. Now to the bottom of the second. It's the Nationals two and the Pirates nothing. And we're back. Leading and now it's Kiebert Ruiz. The catcher. Ruiz. Here comes a pitch. And a good eye there. He swings and fouls one off. This one in the air right field. Sawinski settles underneath it. And he makes the catch. Then there's one down. Batting seven. The second baseman. Luis. And now it's Luis Garcia. That's a little bit low. Foul ball there. Base is empty one away. Bottom half of inning number two. Next oh, offering there. upstairs. And yeah, that's, that's a little great. bit high. Left-hand hitter waits. That Damn. one finds the zone. And that's Damn. strike two. Damn. And the right-hander deals. And he walked him. 
batting it. The third baseman. Now it's Nick Senzel. He has consistently been one of the best in the sport against lefties, and yet the righties give him trouble. You know, you don't want to be labeled as that guy, but the numbers say what they say. No, oh, he's a good player, but if he wants to be great, he's going to have to figure it out against right-handed pitchers. There's so many right-handers in the game that you're going to see them one after another. So you would imagine with that many looks, Boog, that the adjustments got to be coming soon. At the belt and fires. One ball. In the Two dirt, three. blocked. Well done behind the dish. And a ball in two strikes. Ball and two. another ball. And a swing and a miss. That's out number two. Boog gets talked about a lot, but a good high fastball in a two-strike situation, it's just become such a problem for hitters in more recent years. And with all of the emphasis by pitchers on developing that spin rate, having a good grip on the baseball, those high fastballs, they kind of look like to the hitter that they're rising, even though they're not, but they're not decreasing in velocity and spin rate, so very difficult to get the barrel on it. Victor Robles stands in now and watches strike one. Robles measures six feet even, 195 pounds, and he was born in the Dominican nope, Republic. That's a ball. Next pitch is downstairs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Good eye right there. Really close pitch down around the knees there, and you could see him asking where it missed. Probably doesn't agree, but it appears he's ready to move on to the next pitch. And he deals. And a foul ball, he stays alive. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Nationals leave one, but they're on top 2 nothing. Top half of the third inning run. at the play. Leover Peguero. Leover. Aguero. The pitch. And yeah, that's outside. Tried to backdoor him with that slider right there, but just missed off the plate. Good pitch, though. Swing and a pop up. Garcia moving under this one. He makes the grab, and there's one down. Now battle. The short side. Cruz. Here's O'Neill Cruz. Grounded out his first time. And a foul ball. That one misses. And the count is one and one. Next offering is fouled back. Nothing but curveball so far in the at bat. Kind of makes it difficult as a hitter to know what to look for because you start wondering if he'll keep coming with it or if they'll try to speed you up. Ball. The shortstop takes a ball. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And there's two away. 
Brian Reynolds here. Caught looking his first time up. Ball one low. And he takes a strike. And this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Two down, nobody on. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Chopped left side. Abrams throws to first. And they take care of Reynolds for the out. And the Pirates go one, two, three. Nothing doing here for Pittsburgh. And they're down to nothing. Set for the bottom of the third. Here's C.J. Abrams to hit. Not shortstop. C.J. Abrams. The wind and the pitch. And there's the strike. You know, these Nationals do a great job, Boog, of just waiting for the right pitch to come their way. And I'm seeing very patient at bats out of them. They're doing a good job of working the pitch count. And they've been able to push a couple of runs across to yeah. score as well. In for a strike. And it's 0-2. Still relatively early, but with the pair of runs already on the board, the ripple effect of that high pitch count might set them up to do more damage later in this game. Way one upstairs, ball, one and two to count. Three. Struck him out looking. Up now for Washington, Lane Thomas. He's a guy, Chris's highlights include some of the best throws from the outfield that you will ever see. Definitely one of the best arms of the sport. Yeah, the infielders and the catcher can never give up on a play because if this guy thinks he has a chance, he's going to throw it from the warning track if he has to. And clips a corner. And yeah, that's outside. Base is empty one away here in the last half of the third. Battling here as he fouls it away. And another ball. That misses, and it's three and two. He should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with the three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. One down, base is empty. And that's ball four. Now batting, first baseman. Here's Joey Gallo. He's already homer here in this one. Wouldn't chase that time. Maybe losing command a little bit after the walk. Next pitch, not even close. And here it comes. That and that one missing low. Chris with that distraction no and the speedy guy at first. He's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. Pickoff throw, hey. and he's back safely. Two and zero to count. Here it comes. Can't find it here. That's six straight balls. Well, knowing that this hitter's got holes in his swing because he's got so much power, pitcher still can get a little too tight, afraid to make a mistake. There's a strike, and the count is three and one.
And ball nope. four to a board. Gosh, another walk in this one. Man, he is having some real issues with control. So first and second with one man gone. Next for the Nationals is the DH, Joey Meneses. And there's a foul ball. That one fouled off. Runners at first and second with one gone. Got him looking. That's a strikeout. Well, oh, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Here's Eddie Rosario. Went down on strikes his first time through. That one finds the zone. Strike one. Two outs, a couple of base runners at first and second. Comes up empty, that's strike two. Well, I know they've gotten out to an early lead, but you don't want to take these opportunities for granted. With two outs, still lock in with a quality at bat, drive on that run. You may not have another runner in scoring position the rest of this ball game. And that one is inside ball one. And a pitch. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Left hand batter waits. Nope. And downstairs. Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. Swing and a miss. Got him to go up the ladder for the K. So the Nats leave a pair, but they hold the 2 nothing lead. Out of the fourth, now batting Key Brian Hayes. And when you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Gore, back to work. Nope. Just oh, no. missed. This guy plays third base like he's a shortstop, and he welcomes the difficult play. Can throw from so many different angles and Aye. makes really tough plays look very one easy. Ball, the pitch. And oh, another ball. Track. So what are the skills you look for that make a really good defensive third baseman that elite? Well, Boog, one of the things I think about immediately are just the feet. Does he have good feet? Is he able to quickly react? And when you have good feet, you've got soft hands. And soft hand defenders are able to make tough plays look easy. And the pitch. On the ground. And it goes just foul. And there's a fly ball deep right field. That one's back. In one hops off the wall, should be extra bases. Safe at second with a leadoff double. Everything came together for him. He hit that ball really well to deep right field right there. Got a pitch to drive and just stayed through it nicely. Didn't quite have the trajectory to clear the fence, but you're always happy with an extra base hit. Here's Andrew McCutcheon to hit. Rounded out his first time up. In the air, right side of the infield. Makes the catch, and there's one gone. Well, that's a frustrating end to the at-bat for the hitter right there. I mean, that pitch was right down the middle. I think he got a little too excited, came out of his mechanics, and instead of driving that ball somewhere, he popped it up. Unfortunate for him.
Sawinski at the plate and takes high there. Good purpose pitch right there. Trying to tease him, get him to raise his sights, pop something up, and make it an easy out. Tying run at the plate. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. 2013 in the playoffs. You caught one as the Red Sox played the Rays in the division series. I sacrificed a bracelet. It was my wrist and my hand. And a count one and two. Really going after him here. All fastballs to get ahead in the count. Man at second. Two balls, two strikes. Hit. Stop sign goes up a third. Runners at the corners with one out. Now oh, just a nice job coming through in a pretty high leverage spot right there. Hooked around that pitch on the outside, but he was still able to square it up pretty nicely. And that takes quick, strong wrist to pull that off. Now we've got a substitution at third base. Coming in as a pitch runner, G1 Bay. And here's the catcher, Henry Davis. Worked to walk in his first trip to the plate. Ball one and a pitch inside. At the dish, looking to lift the ball in the air in this spot. Anything but the inning, inning double play, boo. That's oh, off the mark, and it's 2-0. Oh. Could be some action here on this next pitch. Couple runners on. Probably a challenge pitch coming. With the go-ahead run at the plate, top half of inning number four. Late swing, fouled off. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. And now it's filled up. So here we go. Base runner at first could be running on the pitch. He's got good enough speed to steal the bag to get in scoring position, even if it's a swing and miss at the plate. Lefty out of the stretch. Runners at first and third. Nope. The 3-2 is off the outside edge, and that is ball four. Now that sets up a really big at bat in this game. These are the moments when everyone in the stadium gets really locked in. to Les. Stands in here. Takes ball one low. Way to lay off that pitch down. So the tying run at second. Foul back our way and that's out of play. And another ball. Base is loaded. One away. That one misses. And now it's three and two. Line drive. Base hit. One runs in. Here comes the throw. It's off the mark, and he scores. Well, he was a little off balance. He got the front foot down, but was so great at keeping the hands back and allowed him still to get good wood to this baseball. Big one there as he drives in a couple of runs. Making a move to first and on a pinch run for Pittsburgh, Edward Olivares. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Michael A. Taylor. He's 0 for 1. Just off the outside edge. Oh. 
One out. Runners at first and second. Next offering upstairs. Two on, one out. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Had him out front for strike three. Bogey well, just ran out of patience there. He took a couple of pitches to even that count off at two balls and two strikes, but that time chased outside the zone. So first and second with two outs. Leover Peguero now at the plate. 0 for 1 with a fly out. And that is in for a strike. 0 1. He's pitching well, but not throwing a ton of first pitch strikes. Usually doesn't work out for success, but he can never predict baseball. That one off the mark. One and one. First and second, two down. Hey. Yeah, there's the strike. Well, if he's going to do something special right here, it's going to have to happen with two strikes. And the next pitch is way outside. Two on, two outs. Three ball, two Squirts away a little bit. Nothing happening on the bases, though. And now the lefty. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Two outs. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Good battle here. About to be the eighth pitch of the at bat. Got it! Inning over, and it could have been worse. They get two and draw even again. To the bottom of inning number four now. We are tied 2 2. Now into the ball game on defense, G1 Bay. He's the new third baseman. Now playing third base, number three, G1 Bay. Now at first, number two. And it's the catcher for the Nationals, Hebert Ruiz. For Washington, the catcher, Hebert Ruiz. The wind of the pitch. Swing and a miss, strike one. Well, a come-and-get-me fastball right there. He didn't look ready for the velocity. I think it'd be a mistake to throw him anything oh, off-speed right here. That one a little bit high, and it's a ball to strike. Right-hander kicks, deals. That one at 95, missed up top. Now two balls and a strike. Here's the strike. Riding to the plate. Gets a piece there. We'll do it again. The 2 2 on the way. And a swing and a miss. Looks like he's picked up right where he left off. And now up for Washington, Luis Garcia. Second base. And a base hit up the middle. So they get a man aboard with a one-out single. Waste no time there. Really nice job staying up the middle with his approach. He didn't try to do too much with the pitch. Just shot it through the infield. Nick Senzel digging in for the Nationals. Struck out swinging his first time. 
Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that's ball one. No if you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get into scoring position. The pitch. And that one fouled off. Trying to keep this a 2-2 game. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. Splits the plate. That's strike two. And another ball. The 2 2. Popped up. He's under it. He's got it. That's out number two. Center fielder number 16. Victor Robles. And now it's Victor Robles up to hit. 0 for 1. He struck out swinging last time. Here's a strike. That was just paint on the first pitch fastball. And he gets that fastball by him upstairs. More and more guys are looking to slug regardless of the count. In this situation, we'll keep a close eye on his approach. This is the zone, and that's ball one. And Robles spoils it. He stays alive. And a pitch. Chases that one out of the zone, and that's the inning. So one left for Washington. Score remains deadlocked at 2 2. We're back, and there's a new arm on the mound to start the fifth. Jose Ferrer. Your attention, please. Now pitching for Washington, number 47, Jose Ferrer. So the Pirates' batting order turns over. At the plate for Pittsburgh, O'Neill Cruz. The wind of the pitch. That's off the mark. Ball one. Activity in the bullpen. Dylan Floro looks to be getting ready for Dave Martinez. The 1 0. Hey! Slice the other way and foul. Well struck deep right field, way back and out of here. A towering shot. It's 3-2. He absolutely crushed that one. No doubt about that one, Boog. We knew it wasn't coming back. Looks like this guy was looking out over the plate, but he was ready to turn on the inside fastball. So direct to the pitch, absolutely blasted out of this ballpark. Brian Reynolds, the next pirate to hit. 
Pitch ball. misses there. And that is ball one. Ferrer goes six foot one. He features a four seam fastball, a slider, a changeup, and he works in a two seamer. And he grounds one back up the middle. Oh, the throw is over his head. And this ball is going to wind up out of play. Just looked like he pushed that throw. Not a long distance, so something definitely broke down mechanically. Sometimes the shorter throws can be harder to make. You don't see many high throws from second baseman over to first because they usually don't have to put much on it. G1 Bay in the box here lets that one go for a ball. Part of the order coming through now, and with one home run already in this inning, they're definitely looking to do some more damage. And a breaking ball drops in for a strike. Swing and a miss. One on, nobody out, a run in, and we're at the top of the fifth. And another ball. And it's second. The punch out there. And that's the first out. And now it's Andrew McCutcheon. He's someone that you might not describe as having elite level speed, but he can absolutely move, and it is a factor in his game. Right through there for a strike. Well, this guy's definitely a plus runner, but what I love about him is that he goes all out every single time, never takes a break. It's guys like that, even though they don't have the elite speed, the fact that they're consistent with it, they make moves on the base paths. In the air on the infield. Should have this one. Snags it for the second out. That was a good pitch to hit right down the heart of the plate. Had pretty good timing on it. Just got underneath it a little bit and popped it up. Up next for the Pirates, Jack Sawinski. One for two. And that one wrapped foul. Well, he got challenged with a good fastball right there. Just couldn't catch up. Lined into left center, and that should be extra bases. They get some insurance as the runner scores from second, and they lead by two. Got the job done to put him up by two. Put a really nice balanced swing on it. And when you can rope one into the gap like that, you're thinking extra bases from the first couple of steps out of the box. And he'll feel real good about that one. And it's scored position with two away. Now, Henry Davis. That one misses. Oh. And it's one and oh. Man on second, two down. Nope, upstairs. And that's in the dirt. No strike. And there's ball four. Got well, a good day for the on base percentage right there. Walk number three, and the free bags keep on coming. You down with OBP, boo? Jordan Weems will take over here. Just trying to keep this one close here, and this is where a bullpen can give their players a chance to fight back into the game. So next to the plate for Pittsburgh, Connor Joe. Taking his first at bat of the game after entering on defense. Left field. He's there. He's got it. And that is that. 
So they get two runs on two hits. One of them left the yard. Last half of the fifth coming up. It's the Pirates four and the Nationals two. Welcome back. And here comes the closer, David Bednar. These are the spots where relievers really make a name for themselves, late and close. There's not much margin for error, but at the same time, there's a reason they're put in these situations. The pitch. Abrams, the batter now as he swings and misses for strike one. Well, these Nats just aren't putting great swings on the baseball in this one. Just one extra base hit for them, so they haven't exactly been hitting the ball gap to gap or out of the park. That makes it really difficult to generate runs. 1-1 one, one now. And a foul ball. One two. Good eye in that spot. And it's three for a hit. So a man on base to start the inning. Singy, that's a start. Yeah, as soon as that ball got through, I could see down in the dugout. Like, the players pumping their fists. They know that they got a chance in this ball game. Now it's the right fielder, Lane Thomas. Now move to first. No, Abrams gets back easily. the inside corner for a strike. The Pirates trying to close out a two-run lead. Last half of inning number five. Tying run at the plate. This one popped up right side. Joe has a beat on it. Makes the grab. And there's one away. Now batting. The first baseman. Joey Gallo. And now it's Joey Gallo. He's already homered in this game. And things could change quickly here with one swing. That one clips the corner. Check on the runner. Abrams back in standing. Here comes the 1. Fought off foul. The Nationals down by a pair. Yeah, the home team trying to pull it out. Next offering upstairs. And the righty deals. And another ball 